everyone, this is C from simplyjeffx.org and today I'll be doing a comparison video between Adobe Photoshop CS5 and CS6 and this is also going to be a first impressions kind of video just outlining some of the new features that I noticed playing around on the new CS6 and doing little demos of them. So looking at the icons side by side, I definitely prefer the CS5 better. It seems more classy, more elegant, whereas the CS6 looks to me a bit tacky but you know that's just my impression. Now the first thing I noticed about CS6 when I opened the program was the loading screen. Now although it is very consistent with the icon I personally don't find it very appealing. The design unlike the CS5 which is much more simplistic is not as smooth and elegant in my opinion. Um, you can see the little circles arranged with the square and if I show you the CS5, you can see that it's much more, it's just much more elegant and recognizable, I think. But I'm sure I'll get used to it in no time. This is just one of the little minor things I'm nitpicking about. So thankfully, the design of CS6 has not changed much from CS5. You can see all of the tools in the top bar is pretty much the same as CS5. The only difference I found with the things is that CS6 is a much darker color, but of course you can change that. Um, if you just go to edit, go down, all the way down to preferences, and go to interface. Now here it allows you to change from four different color themes. I personally quite like the second to last one, just because it reminds me of old CS5. So I've just opened up this picture of a family defined physics, and I'm going to be showing you one of the new features of CS6. Now, the filter gallery in CS6 is pretty much exactly the same as CS5. Same thing with Liquify. But below Liquify is a new filter called Oil Painting, and pretty much this just applies an oil painting effect to your pictures. I don't know why they didn't include this in their filter gallery, but pretty much you can just change up the settings, and it'll just give your photos that very artistic oil painting effect, and it's very realistic probably won't be using this filter much, but I guess it is useful if you want to fake an oil painting or something. The next cool feature I thought was the new blue options in addition to CS5, and that's the field iris and tilt shift blue. And if we start with tilt shift, you can see pretty much what it lets you do is move around this little strip here, and pretty much it blows the entire image apart from the strip that you could widen or compress and you can also um, rotate this yep you can rotate this and this is definitely a very dramatic effect and as you can see if I just want the dad and the son I can and just cut the wife out completely and on the side you can control how much blue you want but what I noticed in CS6 is that now they have a little wheel that you can control and just set how much blue you want by spinning this little little blue wheel. And this is definitely very convenient because you can just kind of use this feature instead of entering values in or using that little side option. And the second blue I'm going to show you is the the iris blue. And pretty much what this does is that it creates a circle and you can adjust the circle and everything outside of the circle is just blurred whereas the area inside the circle stays unblurred and like the tilt shift you can move around the wheel and you can rotate and change the size of the circle to suit your needs and this is very good for photography I could imagine um, and <laughs> Definitely very, a very, very cool feature to have. I probably will be using this quite a bit. And you can see you can just zoom in on the little boy. And the third blue I'm going to show you is the field blue. This is the most interesting one, I think. And pretty much what you can do is set these little, little points on your picture. And if I just set one up the top right and one in the bottom corner and now what you can do is change the scale of the blue 
and what it does is it kind of changes the degree of the blur around the point you set and if you just change the size of the blur you can see I'm getting a bit dramatic obviously you, you wouldn't want it too blurry but pretty much if you just set different blur sizes it all blends into each other beautifully and it just kind of creates like a gradient blur effect or you no know, it's it's definitely very very useful especially if you just want a small portion of your image blurred in CS5 the crop tool is very simple and very basic in CS6 they still have the crop tool and perspective crop tool but they've taken the next step up and now you can really get the part of the image that you want it makes it so much easier and you can see it even previews what it will look like if you crop certain bits of your images and I find this so much better than the CS5 crop tool I really like the changes they've made to the crop tool CSX now offers a new crop tool called Perspective Crop Tool and with this tool you can just crop normally as you would with the regular crop tool or you can crop by perspective and all you do is it's very similar to the pen tool and you just set a perspective and you get a perfect crop with a very interesting angle. Now as I was testing features of CS6 I noticed a new tool that is very similar to the patch tool. You've still got your spot healing brush, your healing brush, your patch tool, and now you've got a content aware move tool. And with this tool you can just easily transport objects in a picture. And you don't even have to cut it out very very slowly and, and have to replace the background. It just teleports the object so much easier and automatically blends it for you. And you can see I'm just moving this man to the left a bit and you can you can tell that there is still a bit of work to do in terms of the background but it blends it very very well with the rest of the image apart from the fact that I cut off his hand he is now safely distanced from his family it is definitely a very handy tool to have and I do look forward to trying out this tool in the future Looking at the layers, not much has changed except that now you can organize them a lot better. And if I just create a new layer and draw in a new family member, try not to be too intimidated by my artistic talents. And then I'll create another layer and just draw in another little family member here. Just jumping into the air with them. And now I'm just going to go to layer, adjustment layer and I might just apply a gradient map. Now if I just go in and label these two layers, I'm going to label layer 1 stick figure 1 and I'm just going to label layer 2 stick figure 2. And the first way you can organize your layers is by name and you can search for your named layers by typing in stick figure and you can see my two little layers just come up. A second way is by effect. I haven't got any so, and the third way is by mode. And if I set my gradient map, for example, on the overlay, and then what I do is just look for overlay layers, my gradient map will come up. The fourth way you can organize your layers is by attribute. And you can find your locked layers, such as my background since it's locked and the last way to organize is by color and you can see I haven't got any. This is definitely very handy to have especially if you work with a lot of layers like me. Now the next feature, this is my favorite, this is the auto recovery feature and if you go to edit preferences and go into file handling you can change these settings and you can tick one tick, I would definitely tick this. You can also choose the frequency that you want your Photoshop to save your files. I'm going to pick 5 minutes because I'm very clumsy and I always forget to save and panic when it crashes. Now as I was playing around with my brushes, I noticed a few new additions to the brushes palette. You've still got your soft and your hard brushes and your other brushes, but now you've got a few new brushes that have different um, brush tips and textures and it's, it's a lot of fun just playing around with these new brushes, I have to say. 
and if you go into your settings you can see the settings on the side I think they have changed a bit to CS5 shape dynamics, scattering, texture, dual brush all that stuff hasn't changed but I do think that there are new settings such as the brush pose and build up which I don't think I've seen before in CS5 so that's definitely something new to try it's definitely really cool that they have come out with all these new brushes and I'll just test one more I promise and I'm sure these all work really really well with a graphics tablet and now if I show you the text tool um, it still works the same um, if you type something you know it still comes up obviously but now um, what I noticed was that if you're going to type paste lorem epsom and this is so 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 useful especially for web designers because you do want filler text to fill up your you know your your text space now I do realize that I have only covered a few new features of the new Photoshop CS6 hopefully this was helpful enough for you to decide whether to stay with CS5 or update and get CS6 before I go, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my subscribers for subscribing and watching my videos. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel. Also remember to like, favourite and share this video if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, check out more Photoshop tutorials on the channel. Thank you for watching another Simply GFX video and I'll see you next time. Bye! Straight to the light.